Hello everyone, it's Andy Glenn here from Sharks TV, welcoming you all to another podcast. And this week, I've got two guests, it's Jordan Marr and Martin Grubb. Good afternoon, chaps. Afternoon. How are you, Andy? I'm doing okay. It's been a while since we've done a podcast, isn't it? It's been a wee while. Is that a new hoodie? That is a new hoodie. Did you like it? I like it. I've seen you like the it. TV it's part of it. Just wondering why I didn't have one. But. Thanks. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah, no, we got some new Sharks TV stuff, so that's that's rather nice. It's appreciated on the on the streams and on the podcast. But talking of streams and podcasts, season so far, what's the thoughts? I'll let Marzi go first. <laughs> um, I think as a group, we probably hoped that we'd be a bit higher up in the standings. Um, I think there's a couple games, a couple one-goal games that we probably felt that we maybe had the run of the play we probably played well enough to get ourselves a win um, and for whatever reason we never managed to get them so I think regarding standings points gained I would say me personally and maybe do I speak for the guys but I'd imagine we're maybe a wee bit disappointed that we didn't have more points and we're no wee bit higher up in the standings but I do think from the first month of the season, I think we've took a lot of really, really positive steps. I think, if you think about it process-wise, I think we have become a lot more consistent. I think our our penalty kill was a bit of a thorn in our side, uh, especially at the start of the season. But I think the last couple, had uh, maybe one or we only conceded one or two in the last three or four games. Last three or four games have been really good. Yeah, so I think we're definitely taking positive steps. Um, Five on five for the most part. I think we've. I, I haven't actually looked at the goals against goals for, but I feel like on the whole, um, we've actually done pretty well. I don't know exactly if it's for plus or minus, but um, I feel we've done quite well in that uh, regard. Um, PP can run hot and cold in certain weekends, certain games. I think the biggest thing is probably just try to find that consistency of. Can we put together a good performance, five and five? Can we kill penalties well? Can we get a, a goal or two each game on the power play? And I think if you can find a way that we can do that, implement that consistently, I think we'll probably start winning a higher percentage of your games. Uh, it's interesting you mentioned the, the power play. I was speaking to William Stenton on another podcast and we reckoned if the, the PP was where you guys would maybe want it to be, would probably be a 75%. Uh, one team that yeah, fair? yeah I'd, I'd probably agree with that yeah Martin you're looking really stern you're going to give me a hard time about the PP or something what no like, I don't I think I think Mars hit the nail on the head consistency yeah. you know like I think first and foremost the one thing I would say is and you know Jordan's been in this this league a, a lot longer but I think you have to you have to appreciate that the league's got better every year it gets better you know and obviously it's only our second year but it's got better um, and the one thing from this year, from last year, when you look at some of the teams, you know, especially a couple that finished below us last year, you know, they've improved. I think we've improved. We have improved. Like, let me say that. But you know, there's, there's no kind of panic here. But there's no gimmies anymore. There's no, uh, oh, it's only this team or it's only that team. Um, you know, and I include us in that. It's, there's no more can it's only Solway, et cetera. It's... So anybody can be anybody on, on any given night, and you've got to be on your game. And I think we've got we've definitely improved and progressed in terms of consistency. Um, our home form, I think, has been pretty good. You know, let's yep. let's um, first night was Leeds. Obviously, as we've John's just said, there our PK lost a sack game. Let's be honest, and it's the first night of the season. Um, but five and five, we were good, and we won the game. If you break it down into these segments, and I think after that, you know, the Sheffield game was the less said about that, the better that when it comes to the third period. You know, it's tough, right? We could make the excuse that we never got home till five or five thirty a.m. for for slow the night before. Yes, right. We were tired. We were right in the game for forty minutes. Couldn't score. Then they get a third, and it just took all energy out of legs, and you know, and they end up. There's no hiding. The players don't hide behind it. The staff don't hide behind it. That was an unacceptable result for us. Like we're not going to shy away for that. But apart from that, I feel we've been in every game. You know, we went to Leeds. Should we have won? Maybe. 
like you know where last year you're maybe going to Leeds and then you're going to MK and you're you're kind of probably looking more at let's be competitive let's try not to get blown out um, but now we're going to win we're going to win every game where we can sometimes it's actually to our detriment when we're pushing too hard and we're getting suckered um, and then the PP yeah like a couple of weeks ago we played the Raiders it was 75% our PK after after they got back in the game and we took the time out and we changed our PK for there we were 100% we were 100% for three straight games on the PK at that stage we were still somewhere between 35 and 50% on the, on the PP um, and then do you want the truth we started working on it because at that stage we hadn't really worked on the PP we kind of took what was given we used the a bit of structure of course but we used the creativity we've got in our lineup on both units um, we're still wasting some chances every team does um, but we started really looking at it and seeing can we try and make a bit more of a an improvement for sure but more a con on a consistent basis again and it's kind of got worse <laughs> um, just in terms of I think we're overthinking it you know I think we're overthinking it we're trying to we're trying to outthink the opposition I also think in the league and we're one of the teams that's made that improvement. And in hockey in general now, penalty kills are improving. doesn't matter what level you watch, the highest level of the game, PKs are good now. People block shots, people's sticks are good, the detail's good. So it's, it's not as much maybe as a gimme to score as it used to be. That being said, we have to be better. We're not, again, we're not hiding behind that. That has to be better. Um, you know, and players don't go out there to deliberately no score in a PP or to deliberately lose a hockey game. It's it's been competitive, and there has been fine margins here and there. But I think the one thing that's still pleasing is the fact that we're we're in each game and we're going to win each game now. Can we turn some of these one goal deficits? Same conversation we had last year. You know, I think we missed out by five points in the playoffs if we had when we were in twelve one goal games defeats if you turn them into overtime defeats you're in the playoffs um so it's it's finding ways just to make sure that we're getting something out of every game i think one of the other positives for me that you know maybe has been forgotten in a, in a couple of the recent results is i think barring maybe two we've picked up a picked up a winning every weekend you know i think that making this place a, a bit of a fortress has definitely got to be one of our, our most positive things and so far so good but um yeah folk are not folk aren't looking forward to coming and playing us here are they no no i mean you look you look at the the neutral zone people talk about right but it's the same for both i know we train here obviously but same for both teams when you get going the game is still the same i just think we 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 know how to play in this rink without belittling anybody else you know and again jordan can talk about that as, as a a guy playing on the, on that ice every week, but I think the ice surface here suits us. Like we're a hockey team, we've uh, and maybe to our detriment again at times we don't dump the puck. Maybe sometimes we shoot a little bit more, but we don't like to to waste pucks. So we sometimes overplay. But the the fact that this is a great ice surface to play on, you get used to that. Then you go to some of the rinks, and again, it's not the teams that we're playing's fault because they don't manage the rinks. But some of the ice surfaces are. Oh no, good for us. All right, well, let's let's cut to the chase. What's the difference playing here, Jordan, and playing in Peterborough? Uh, I know you've got a lot of friends still in Peterborough, no. so then dump, uh, dump yourself in it. The, the <laughs> nets, the nets here are a lot better. I think um, in Peterborough, the nets were actually one of the hardest things to adapt to because there's no. It's just like a little peg in the in the actual net, whereas here we have the actual proper metal pegs. So it's a, you actually probably it's a goal you get a better push off the boss. I mean, they do come off occasionally. Um, but you can do learn how to work. I mean, it takes a while to get used to it in Peterborough. Um, the ice surface is better. Um, maybe not as cold here in Solway as it is uh, in Peterborough. Um, the lines are a lot clearer on the ice. <laughs> uh, but um, I think that the big thing is um, the see when we're playing well and. Um, the crowd get going and it creates that atmosphere. It makes it a really, uh, it's maybe the same for the way team as well, but nobody wants to play in like a 
there's some t- in the past you go into some ranks and it's just dead and it feels like a training session sometimes. Uh, but like when the crowd are going, maybe it's after a goal or some good plays or whatever, it's when when the noise is there, it motivates me. I try and kind of keep the noise out, but like I can imagine the guys on the ice and on the bench, like it, it gets them going and it motivates you, it gives you that extra five ten percent jump so when the when the crowd is vocal they're singing uh no boy day no party or whatever the cheer is uh it does uh, we do hear it and it does get us going that's some i definitely appreciate playing and the the far we scotland at the start of each games i prefer You're starting to like that yeah i, I, like I, I definitely that. prefer that over uh, what i had to listen to in the past <laughs> very good very good i think it's quite interesting what you said as well martin about the league's improved can i maybe just I might explore that a little bit more. I would suggest that the difference between the very top teams and the very bottom teams has gone narrower as well. So every week there is a you're not I'm not saying you're not frightened to play Leeds or Milton Keynes or, or Hull or Swindon, whoever's sitting at the top of the league. But there's a bit of excitement about it. It's like we could turn them over here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean I think purely from a coaching point of view. I enjoy the games because I think you feel then that you can have a little bit more of an impact because it's structure. It's maybe there's maybe a bit of a kind of chess match going on there of you know what is for example what is Ryan and Leeds going to do compared to how we're going to play or um, some of the teams there's maybe a bit more open feels a bit less structured and. You know, if I'm honest, I think some of the teams are the ones we struggle with. But um, there is no fear. I mean, I, even last year, there was no fear for us, I don't think. But I know what you mean. Um, I think there is now an excitement around our group because, as, like I said earlier, last year, especially on the road, last year you would go and say, let's let's stay in it, let's stay in it as long as you can. Can we nick something? Aye. You know, and, and this year, even you look, at, look back at Milton Keynes and, and, you know, Jordan hears it for the other side, this time Cal was playing um, so you can hear for the bench side this this that game where you know he, none of us are f- for coaching staff the players are going right let's just try and get through this let's hope that we can not get beat by a lot yeah. it's we, we we went behind we found our way back in it we went behind we found ourselves right back in it and you know at that point probably that was again as we said before to our detriment because we like to play hockey, and, and our mentality was, you know, we can win this. Yeah. And it went to 4-3, and you're like, oh, we can win this game. Now, unfortunately, we pushed too hard, too quick, and uh, they had a couple of sucker punches, and then they had to go right at the end. But, you know, the big guy had, Cal had stayed and kept us in the game and, and stayed strong to get us to where we were, and then people kind of got a wee bit excited. But last year, we were going, you know, even getting beat, Five three six three and and a rink like that, you're kind of going top end to bottom end. It's not a bad result. Like we were all right, we weren't really bad, but it's not good enough for us this year because as a group yeah. of players, as a group of staff, you know, as, as a club, we've always said it. We're not just here to kind of take part. It's it has to be that we believe we can we can compete first and, and ideally win every game we go into. And I think every team, you know, going back to you saying that the difference between the top and the bottom. I think everybody's like that now. Yeah. No, obviously, the, the, the Steel Dogs had their well-documented problems last year. As a club, they've totally changed. So now, you know, they're, look, they're now looking, I guess rightly so, we said even last year, you know, they were a playoff winner a couple of years ago. They want to, they feel they can win every game. You go for, well, again, Jordan was part of that group, but you look at, at Slava's group in Peterborough, you know, they won the playoffs last year by just sticking together and believing and having a common goal and now they feel they can kick on again so and again we beat them here and, and you know we're unlucky down there I think we're right in games so it's but it is ultimately that I think every team in the league is looking for the same thing a bit of consistency maybe a wee bit of puck luck here and there and um, who I mean for us if we can go on a run and find that consistency and go on a run and maybe like we did last year around Christmas time if you can go on a longer run I think it very quickly changes from sitting you know 8th, ninth, whatever 10th to 4th and 5th I think MK and, and Leeds right now are slowly pulling away 
good teams. But again, you know, we've got to play them and we've done well against them here in the past. So there's definitely an improvement in the league, but there's definitely, a, a, I should say, less of a, a fear and more of an excitement for all teams to play against the top guys because that's, that's who you want to push yourself against. And I think we've got a group capable of challenging on any given night. Uh, I'm going to... Because you're talking about the games being so so close and the, the league being so tight, I'm going to throw in something just myself. I mentioned this to, to Liam before. Because the games are so tight, is it not absolutely essential that all the critical calls on a game are called correctly? Is it time to bring in video um, help for officials and big calls and perhaps video challenges on calls that have been missed or calls that have been called that maybe weren't penalties. And we think back to the the playoff final last year, did the puck cross the line? Last weekend, Dops used the same video analysis that is on a stream to call um, Tim, Tim Wallace for a check to the head when there was no a call on the play, which it doesn't really do anything for the benefits of Hull who made that claim. They've missed a, a major penalty and the chance to score two or three goals, is it not time that we brought in that sort of technology that's available in NHL, it's available in the Elite League as well, to help our officials get the best calls? Nobody's going to take that. Nobody's going to even yeah, do go I, down this road. Do tread, I tread carefully. Right um, <laughs> I, I, the first thing is the officials are human, right? We all, we all have to we get that. You know, I've said it. I, you know, I don't know, obviously Mars is still playing, but at no point in my thought process when I finished playing did I ever think about being an official. It's not for me. So I'll say that. Respect to the guys that, that officiate. Do they get it right all the time? No. Let's be honest. Some of them think they do, but no. And do we get it right as coaches and players? No. But I don't see why we wouldn't embrace the technology that's out there most of the rinks we're going to now and we're playing in have a big screen. You know, people, even in our league, you know, people are changing the mentality yep. of it's an entertainment product here. So of course the, the technology is used for that. But if we have a you know, if we have a big screen there, if we have a or, you know, NHL, the Elite League's done the same, a coach's challenge. Yep. You know, but with repercussions. If you lose it, you get that penalty. Yeah, penalty. So it's not just a, f a way for people to kind of mudsling and throw things at officials because you're still going to have contentious decisions. You're still going to have opinions. You're still going to have coaches versus refs kind of right v wrong and that will never go away for any sport. It's probably, albeit we don't think at the time, it's maybe one of the beauties of sport is, is people's opinions. But personally, yes, I would like to see... Um, I don't think we can re-referee the games. When you look at, I look at, we've spoken before. Ah, you know, Jordan does. Loves, we love, I love football, but the VR sometimes I still thinks is a disaster. But it's not the, it's but, not the same as so, football. So for me, as long as we're not re-refereeing every but, game, but I there's think so many breaks in hockey. You know, if there's an injury, you can be stopping playing for five, ten minutes. If the plexi breaks, you're stopping for fifteen minutes to get replaced. So the the breakage in play that you see as a criticism of VAR on football, it's, it's not it's not as relevant in hockey. It's about making sure that when the games are tight, that, are this, that the games are not decided by the officials. They are decided by the athletes that are on the ice. That's, that's where I'm coming from when I'm saying this. I think, Spud's mentioned it, the league's getting better every year. It's becoming more professional every year. And if you can, whether it's further training to kind of raise I mean we train every week if it's to help the refs raise their game or if it's just to um, give them the tools that allows them to make better decisions I think that could only help the league and help the, um, the level they play and make sure it's decided by the results are decided by the players on the ice and no uh, I'm not too sure kind of call on the on the ice by the referees or that but um, again what Spud said like Oh, it's a very, very difficult job. I mean, it's there's a lot of moving pieces. We're only human, and people are going to make mistakes regardless. So I think if you can give them the tools that allow them to make better informed and ideally the correct decisions, I, I'm I'm all for that. 
is, is it Mr. Farron that's the super referees of, of supervisor? I think Dave's one of the uh, supervisors there, yeah. and Colin Davidson, um, I think, is the the head. If any of, the if any of these guys want to come down on a little podcast uh, with me, I'd love to have a have a chat about all things and get the officials side of the the story and and why it, we know it's a difficult thing. Mm. The, the, the pace is just so fast and people make the, the best guesses but it's about getting those decisions right and the fact that Dops overturns these things means would indicate to me that sometimes they're wrong but retrospectively I mean even against us Mason got a five minute call from Dops within the game it was two minutes that made a that makes a difference to the outcome of the game yeah and I think you're always going to have that um, I think yeah, Jordan is probably hitting the nail on the head. It's for everybody, not just officials. The more yeah. training, practice, technology that we can bring in to help. You know, when we bring young players into the game now, the you know, it's the whole. The more they practice, the better they get. Jordan being one of them. That you know, goalies especially now in, in today's game, they're massive in the game, but they have specialist goalie coaches because it's going to make them better. Um, I know there is refereeing officials, so it's not just about officials for me. It's you know this coach education program. So the more the, yeah, the more tools we can give them, the more options they've got for ultimately the right decision to be made for both the game and ultimately the paying public because yeah. you know they're the ones putting their hard-earned cash in every game and wanting to try and see the game decided by two teams going hammer and tongs. Um, it would certainly be an option, and I, you know, I know, Colin, I know Dave, but I know Colin Davidson really well. You know, I've grew up in Fife with him, um, or on that same rink and stuff. And I'm pretty sure Colin would happily come and explain. He's he's an open guy, and right, Colin, um, come on then. You know, I'm not putting him on the spot, but <laughs> you just I, 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 <laughs> but I think I think also to be fair to the, the officials, their hands potentially are tied with the same things as clubs are. You know, bit of funding. But ice time, travel, work, etc. So um, it's going to be an argument that is, I think, though, is going to be more and more relevant over the next months, weeks, and years because the more technology that comes out there and the more people that come and support our sport, which is happening more and more every, every game, um, people want the right decisions. So um, yeah, the better that the sport can be and the more it can grow. I think everybody's all for that. Right, I'll get off my, my controversy horse now <laughs> and we'll, we'll talk about um, other other things. Jordan, you've obviously moved up from Peterborough. What's been the best thing about moving up to Scotland? Um, well, we, we love Dumfries. It's, um, if I'm honest with you, before I moved up, all I really knew about Dumfries was the rink, really. I mean, really, I was just come for Scotland trainings or games and then or yeah, games last year with the Phantoms and then you head off a game. Um, but no, just just the history. We had a we walked through the town and walked to uh, Heath Hall the other day and uh, walked back and it's just <clears throat> I'm I'm sounding like an old man now, but um just like the architecture and like one minute you're in town, the next minute you're surrounded by the rural areas, the farming areas, and it's just uh it's a it's a wonderful place. I mean um. I live right by the rink. I can walk to training most days, walk to games most days, and loads of stuff for Cameron to do and stuff. Um, we're we're very very. <clears throat> I feel very very fortunate that um, obviously last season was a bit in limbo towards the end, and yeah. I feel like I've really landed on my feet here. Way regarding the town, regarding the organisation and everything, and I feel like coming to Solway, it feels like. I may have mentioned this in another interview downstairs with you, but um, I feel like we're a team that's in its ascendancy. Like we're, yeah. we've got a lot of re really, really good young players who are under twenty three, under twenty four, and hopefully we can keep them for as long as possible. But I feel like it's a really, <clears throat> it's like a program, some that we're hoping to build upon the next couple of years, and hopefully I'm here for the next couple of years. But um, it's some we're trying to build on and kind of make it a stable team that's fighting in the top half of the league um, fighting for trophies every season and that's some I mean I hate losing um, I want to be winning 60 plus percent of your games and challenging for trophies and I mean they've got that 
history and that culture here already for the NHL one and years past as well when it was at ENL two these yeah. came in. So we do have a team, a good core of guys ha- have won. It's just kind of seeing how we can take that next step and start winning more consistently at this level and start um, challenging for trophies. And that's one thing I am excited about. Like obviously right now we're in ninth place in the standings, games in hand or whatever. But one thing I think as you get older is you learn that just because that's the situation you find yourself in right now, it doesn't mean that's that for the rest of the season. It's maybe just, uh, I mean, I'll go back to Peterborough last season. Like we had a good first half, and the second half of our season was wasn't very good, and it was very difficult. We for a lot of guys, um, off ice, on ice, a lot of injuries, and it can kind of get to you. But I think the one big it's a reminder to myself, but it's a reminder to all the guys in the team and fans as well, is that I don't think any team's ever won anything with a, a bit of adversity. Sometimes that adversity can be a tough month, can be a tough couple months, whatever. Um, but I think the adversity strengthens the team spirit as long as everybody t- is on board and takes it the right way. And I think th- as much as... I don't, I don't think we're playing bad either. We're actually playing... Where our process is really good, some of our performances have been really good. Just maybe know the results that we kind of feel we deserve, but I think that adversity, if we keep pushing through it, um, second, well, the remainder of the season will hopefully be a lot better results wise. But I think that's the big thing is just you need to keep trust in the process, and eventually, good things happen. That was really good. That was a really good answer. Eh? It's a smart man. The answer, I, I don't even know the original uh, The original question was, what do you welcome uh, Scott? I mean, I'm just ref- reflecting, uh, Mason, you're going to have to do some video analysis on this answer. Because <laughs> when I asked Mason the same question, he went, what was the best thing about coming to Scotland? Yeah. He went pizza crunch and square sausage. <laughs> so, you know, there's a, there's, there's a difference there. Yeah. Come on, Mason, come on. Up your game. Um, what's the best thing about having Jordan here, Martin? I said it right at the beginning, right? I've known... Jordan, we've known the whole family for a long time and they're a great family and you know that's went from his mum and dad right into Jordan and Rennie and now Jordan's family but he gives us veteran leadership thinks the game he speaks well as, as you hear yep. obviously he's right now he's performing and giving us a chance to win every night and I know how much he hates losing I know how much he, he really it's probably his, his own worst critic at times. He wants to save every shot that comes. I think he's in, he's helped us in practice just by the the level, and and he's got a good goalie partnership going now with Cal uh, and Logan. You know, I think it helps them. So, you know, I, I just think that whole holistic side of things that we knew we were getting a good hockey player. I knew I was getting a good person, but everybody else has now seen that that. Mm-hmm. The, the whole thing works. He gets to wake up every morning and hear a Scottish accent <laughs> rather than, than being down south. And, yeah. you know, to, be joking fair, about to be fair, though, there's a lot of Peterborough fans that still love you, and a lot came up um, when Peterborough came up and were, you know, they were really glad to see you again, didn't they? There were some good people down there. Yeah, I I'd, I'd really enjoyed my time there. There was, um, there was a lot of really, really, really good people on the hockey side and outside of hockey that I met. and. I'm I'm grateful for it. I mean, I wouldn't have stayed down there for five seasons, six years through COVID and everything, unless I enjoyed it. Um, and like I said, it was time for a change, and I'm I feel like I really landed on my feet because, I mean, 33 years old, um, I've got to play hockey for a long, long time. For some people, maybe that tough spell I had that could it could have been curtains, but I think obviously finishing with the playoffs and having an opportunity to come up here, it's kind of gave me a new lease on life, uh, hockey, um, a wee change, and it's, um, if anything, potentially, hopefully, fingers crossed, it may have actually extended my hockey career by a couple of years as well, so. It's good. And it was nice to see mum and dad do the ceremonial puck drop between you and your brother the other day as well. That yeah. was quite nice. Yeah. Um, That's Christmas, sorry. Everybody's getting the same Christmas yeah. present. A frame photo of that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think John wanted to ruin my pre-game prep, but he sent stents and said, would you be all right if you did the puck drop? And I was just like, as long as mum and dad are fine with it and Rennie's fine with it. So that was, a, that was a nice wee touch, yeah. 
Fantastic, fantastic. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for both of you coming along and chatting to us today. Um, as always, it's a pleasure. And I'm going to let the final word go to both of you, to the to the fans. But just before you do that, um, just remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Please get it on your Facebook page, your Twitter page, your Blue Sky, whatever you're using as your social media and get this shared amongst as many people as possible. But the final word will go to Jordan and Martin. Jordan, you first. Message to the fans. Uh, Shrax fans, thank you for all your support so far this season. Um, keep bringing the noise, and hopefully me and the boys will uh, start bringing you more wins. Martin? Yep, Shrax fans, again, thanks for the support so far. Um, I more than anybody know that we've built a winning culture here, and at the moment, some of these results are difficult to take. I feel your pain, but as Jordan says, you know we're working hard. We need you guys to stick with us, and uh, our, our fortunes will turn, and we'll get wins on a more consistent basis. So keep being loud and proud, and we'll turn this ship around and uh, make sure that we're at the top end of the table and everybody's smiling. Thanks again, chaps, and thanks to everyone who's watched at home. This is Andy Glenn saying cheerio.